to anyone who eventually turns up, welcome to Castle Hill in Huddersfield.
just look at church bells the start of the, the little two. So we'll start at the beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. To, to whom, whom shall we go? go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of endless glory. And so the reading won't be a surprise to anyone. Um, is from Acts chapter two. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated, and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what the pro prophet of Joel spoke. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. 
the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So rather than a conversation about the reading this morning, um, we're going to hear a reflection. Um, probably risky in case you all fall back asleep. Um, so I'm going to invite you uh, just to keep looking at this picture of the uh, beautiful sky on your screens while you, uh, while you listen to this reading. We've been looking forward to this day for a while. I absolutely love the feast. We've been preparing all week in our house. It's so special when everyone gets together to celebrate, to eat good food, and more importantly, everyone gets the day off work. There has been talk all week of a heavy rainpour coming to ruin the feast day. Much to the town's whole delight, the sun was blazing hot and the sky was clear. It was perfect. Walking through the hustle and bustle of the streets, the aroma of baking bread and cooking meat was teasing my nostrils. I could almost taste the feast to come. The streets were heaving with people, all of us heading the same way down the narrow street, like herding sheep. The town square was only a few minutes walk away. That's where we all meet to gather. Before we could eat the feast, the high priest has to make offerings to the Lord in celebration of the new harvest. Thousands of people come from everywhere to see the offering and celebrate the harvest together. It's one of the biggest celebrations of the year. I could feel the excitement building as we all moved to gather together. Waiting in the square, I was squashed in between so many people, trying to push my way forward, weaving in and out of men and women all around. It's much, it's much better to arrive early. You're in with a chance of view as you get closer to the front. Usually I do arrive really early to take a place there, but this morning I had to help my mum with the cooking. I told her how important it was that I get a front row view, but she insisted, telling me I'm old enough now to help. And now here I am, late and trying to push my way into at least the middle of the crowd so I can hear what's going on even if I can't see properly. The smell of thousands of people sweating as they wait in the scorching sun had very quickly replaced the gorgeous smell of meat and bread. My nose itched as I tried my hardest to breathe through my mouth. Here we go, something was happening. The high priest has started talking. Ugh, I'm really struggling to hear anything. I'm so far away from the front and the rude people around me are enjoying their own conversations. Flashing them a dirty look I'm and hushing them, I edge closer trying to make out what is being said. When suddenly, whoosh! A gush of wind out of nowhere, nowhere, so strong it's almost blown me over, and the high priest has dropped his bread. What on earth is going on? A gale is blowing through the crowds. It's so strong people are stumbling and struggling to stay on their feet. What is going on? It's still so sunny. The sky is clear, and there doesn't seem to be any explanation for this wind. It's totally come out of nowhere. Everyone seems confused and there's a lot of chatter going on. People are confused asking where the wind has come from and why it's not stopping. A lot of strange things have been going on in Jerusalem lately. This Jesus man turned up, causing absolute havoc, saying really profound things and shaking life up for everyone. Pharisees were riled and things got nasty. Jesus was punished to death on a cross and it seemed that his followers had all turned against him as they shouted crucify, 
and turned their backs on him. But then I heard rumours that this same Jesus who died rose back to life and was at large once again. I've not seen him yet though. I wonder where he's gone. My thoughts were interrupted by an eruption of noise working its way through the crowd. The high priest at the front is trying to regain the attention of the crowd and yet people are enjoying their own conversations. So many people in the crowd have all pilgrimed to Jerusalem for this celebration. Perhaps ignoring the high priest and having their own conversations is okay where they come from. Oh, hang on a second. They're speaking different languages. These conversations are all in funny languages. I wonder if these people are speaking in the language of their country. This is so strange. Why are they just babbling in another language? It doesn't make any sense. And why just them? Everyone's looking at them. Why aren't they stopping? And they are so keen. Arms in the air, head towards the sky, shouting enthusiastically. It's almost like they're talking in a funny language to God. They must be drunk. I can hear some others saying that too. I'm glad I'm not the only person suspecting them. Then a man stood up at the front next to the high priest. He had a few other men with him. I'm sure I recognised him as one of the strange men who followed that Jesus around everywhere. Hang on, he's saying something now. These people aren't drunk. It's only nine in the morning. The Spirit of God is in these people, just like the prophet Joel said. Who is this Joel? What did he say? And how does this man know the Spirit of God is making these people speak in different languages? What even is the Spirit of God? Oh no. More and more people are starting to babble, babble away in a different language. What is going on? Gari Vinditi Bach What is going on? What am I saying now? Everyone praise God. He is great. Everyone praise God. He is great. Now in a few moments of uh, quiet, I wonder if you'd like to think about some of these questions. I wonder how it feels when you experience something unexpected, strange or unique. How do you react when you're scared, anxious, nervous or excited? I wonder how you would describe an experience with the Holy Spirit. Would it be an all-consuming power, or a still, small voice of calm? I wonder how encountering God in this way would change your life.
So as we come to a time of prayer together, um, we haven't got our usual prayer list with us, but if you'd like to type in the comments those things you'd like to to pray for this morning as we as we gather to you. Um, we'll try and pray for those as we're, as we're going through. Um, we're just going to, as we do sometimes, offer you one line to hopefully spark some thought of prayer in your own, in your own hearts um, and leave some quiet and, and feel free then if you'd like to, to type anything there. And then when we say, um, thy kingdom come, would you respond where you are with thy will be done? So thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. So loving God on this day of Pentecost, we pray for an outpouring of your spirit in our lives, in the lives of this country and across the world. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be, be done. done. God, we pray for our neighbours and our communities where we are as they wake up to this new day, for all that is in store for them. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done. done. Lord, we pray for more of your justice across this world. Justice and equality and safety for all people. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be, be done. done. God, we pray today for all people all across the world who are unwell with COVID-19. Thy kingdom come. Thy, thy will be done. We pray for all those people who are still at work, going back to work, or anxious about what the next few weeks might bring.
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We pray for people today who are, whose hearts are aching as they mourn the loss of a loved one. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done. God, again this morning we lift up the prayers of our community together online. Praying for all those names that we have had on our, on our hearts all week. I'm praying especially this morning for Rebecca and for Sue and all of her family. And in the quiet, we bring other names on our hearts this morning. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And Lord, we pray for all our church families. Though we might be separated by distance, we are united by the gift of your spirit. May each and every person know your presence with them today and ever. So we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his Pentecost people to pray. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and, and the, the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. So as we turn back to our liturgy, we join in with the words of the canticle, starting Christ as a light. Christ, Christ is a light, illumine and guide me. Christ is a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ is a light, Christ is a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the, In the name, name of, of the Father, Father and, and of the Son, and, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. We're going to just sit here a while longer.
Thank you. 